We need to face facts. There is a problem with some of the rhetoric being pumped out in mosques in Great Britain. A new generation of hardline Islamist extremists are ready to take violent action if you insult their religion. Remarkably, the taxpayer is paying, arguably, for the radicalisation of some people. Lewisham Islamic Centre in South London, for example, is chief imam reportedly, Shaquille Begg, once called on young Muslims to go to Palestine and fight the Zionists, was given 540 grand by the taxpayer between 2015 and 2020. The Charity Commission is investigating after a religious leader in Southall scolded Muslims who have not prepared for jihad. One in Bradford called for victory to the Mujahideen of Palestine. One Manchester mosque sermon at the end of Friday prayers called for Al-Aqsa Mosque to be freed from the dirty, usurping and aggressing Zionists while an online sermon praised Hamas for their moral victory over Israel. And now the Commission for Countering Extremism has published a report with these key findings about blasphemy. A new generation of UK-based anti-blasphemy activists are aspiring to make blasphemy a central concern for British Muslims. Tariq e Labaik, an anti-blasphemy political party in Pakistan, appears to be developing a UK presence. Islamist terrorist groups continue to call for violent reprisals for instances of blasphemy. Now, we have had a flashpoint, and the report suggests that Tariq e Labaik, that group, has been at the centre of most of them. Batley Grammar School, a teacher, shows a picture to the Prophet Muhammad, of the Prophet Muhammad, to some kids. Massive protest. Here is one man outside the school gates clearly calling for blasphemy laws. The incident from Monday 22nd of March must also be investigated from a criminal perspective, yes. given that it was a clear attempt to stir up religious hatred. We also use this opportunity to call upon the entire British Muslim community to review the materials being taught in their children's schools. There were protests in Birmingham and many other places over the screening of that film, The Lady in Heaven, which depicted Mohammed's daughter. People mobbed up and cinemas caved in. Cineworld sent an employee out with a microphone to apologise. Uh, confirming that we've cancelled this film and will not be showing it again. <laughs> We value you as customers, we value you all as our customers within the heart of this community, at a local level, it wasn't our decision to show this film, it came from above, we totally agree with what you're saying, and we are not prepared at this cinema to show this film. Roshan Sally, the editor for the news platform Five Pillars, wrote a review for the site, describing the film as pure unadulterated sectarian filth. They wanted it banned because it offended Muslims. It was blasphemous. In Wakefield, an autistic boy scuffed a copy of the Koran. The local mosque demanded his mother and the police turned up to apologise. They even put this on social media there, saying, ah, oh, the matter's not quite finished. But then today it emerged. The man in the running to be the government's anti-hate czar, Fiaz Mughal, has quit before he's even started. Why? Well, he does blame pushback from some far-right extremists, but he also makes this very revealing comment. He says, I am angry because the government has been saying for decades, where are the British Muslims speaking out? When we speak out, we are left to our own devices. The impact on our personal and professional lives is enormous. Well, why is that? Could it be that there is a problem within aspects of the Muslim community that deems any pushback on Islamist extremism to be blasphemous and punishable with extreme violence? He goes on to say it's infiltrated our civil service as well. He says they have civil servants who have sympathies with these groups. Look, the facts are these. Some mosques are platforming and spreading radical material. An extreme anti-blasphemy group is operating in the UK, and we've seen anti-blasphemy movements with our own eyes. And extremists are threatening people who try to call this out and stop it. There is another more damning fact, though, isn't there? Our politicians and our police are far too weak to do anything about it. They're too scared. 